So welcome, my name is Jason Barnes, and uh, I'm the Chief Operations Officer here at Genesis Chiropractic Software. I'm really glad that everyone joined us today. And as we're talking about patient retention, um, this is gonna be more of a session where we go over the strategies and the best practices that we recommend. Now, I'm looking forward to hearing any feedback, any suggestions that anybody on this call has, and we'll open it up at the end for questions and answers, and I'll check periodically throughout the, the presentation. Feel free to actually type in any of your questions. I'd be happy to answer them. And I know uh, as we've had webinars recently here, some of the best interactions that I've had have been over the last couple of, of sessions uh, where I know we can learn so much from you guys and we build this system so that it will work for so many practices, but I know there are lots of scenarios where the things that we recommend sometimes don't work. So we would love to hear about those and, and see what we can do to solve those issues. But I'm actually gonna start on a more personal note today. So to do that, Showing a picture, this is my family. Um, I like them a lot. They've uh, been married now for nearly 16 years and we've got three beautiful kids. And the reason I use this particular slide is they are the most important thing to me. I've been supporting chiropractors and offices now for seven years. And my personal story is that I was not very good at it for the first three because I didn't realize that the office managers, the front desk people, and most of all those practice owners feel the same way about their patients as I do about my family. So the moment that I realized that that connection existed is when I started becoming more effective at helping practices actually make that connection themselves. So, I don't let my 13-year-old daughter go out without knowing where she's going and having the ability to communicate with her uh, when she isn't home on time or needs to be picked up from gymnastics or school, whatever it is. And uh, so I'd like to actually apply that same logic to your patients. I understand that you care about them and you wanna track them, but we're gonna go over the strategy that we're recommending to actually do this and uh, if you care about them the way I care about my family, I think we're gonna have a great presentation today. So getting started, what are your family goals? Number one, you wanna grow the family. My wife and I may or may not be done, but I know all of you wanna keep growing your practices, and that I'm sure of. So as you wanna grow your family, you wanna track the family that you've already got. You cannot install GPS trackers on your patient, you can't do it. So your goal is to get more, keep the ones that you have by tracking them, and then finally, you need to communicate. You need to communicate with those patients, and there's no way around that. So today we're gonna to talk about how are we gonna do this, all right? Because the family matters, you have to have a practice that has team clarity. What am I supposed to do? And so we wanna talk about how to achieve clarity from practice owner to office manager to front desk to CA. What is it that you want each person to do to gain, help gain new patients and keep the ones that you have. So reten retention is going to be the main focus for today's presentation. When a patient falls into one of those gaps, right, how do we know who fell out of touch? How do we identify those scenarios? Even if you put in the best preventative measures in the world, there is always gonna be a patient no-show. There's always gonna be a patient who somehow can't schedule their future appointment right now and they want you to get in touch with them in the future. So how do I identify those gaps? And so because the family matters, we have to be able to answer these questions. What's your team supposed to do and how are you going to identify those people that need attention, all right? So what's our secret? First, we have to define the problem, right? So that's what we're talking about with giving great direction to your team, making sure they know exactly what to do because We've actually defined what's going to happen. Then we have to be able to measure it. How often is it happening? How often is there a patient who's leaving without a future appointment or no-shows or somebody who is transitioning from the end of a care plan into maintenance care or an exacerbation took place and they have to go from wellness or, or maintenance back up to acute care or they're in a care plan 
and they need to switch from cash to insurance, insurance to cash, and that's where you're losing patients because they have to change what it is that they're doing, and now all of a sudden they're thinking about not getting better, but they're thinking about their, their wallets or pocketbooks. So we're going to talk about that today. And then you want to talk about preventing it in the future. How can we prevent this problem? But you need to be able to address it in the moment. When somebody falls through the gaps and we've identified that patient, we're going to talk about strategies in the next few minutes about how to do all of this. Okay? So define it. Where can the practice lose a patient? Their scheduling, setup, and policies. We're going to actually get into the schedule here in a moment, but there are two big areas, right? Patient doesn't show up to your office. What do you do? It's like one of those T-shirts from the, the early 90s. You know, what do you do? And so most of the time, there's a process in place. You've talked to your staff about this. You've talked to them, hey, I want us to call. We're, you know, if they're late more than five minutes, more than 10 minutes, more than 15 minutes, I want to pick up the phone and I want to make a phone call. Okay, how does a practice manager, a practice owner know that this took place? Let's talk about that in, in a couple of minutes. A patient leaves your office without a future appointment, okay? And that's not even it with scheduling. This is just, these are some of the highlights. How are you setting your patient up? Most of the time we find that, I'll throw a statistic out here, I didn't include it in the presentation, but patients are two times more likely to become part of your attrition statistic if they have to pull a credit card out each time that they walk through the door. We still have practices that lose patients who are set up on recurring payments or prepayment, but they are two times more likely to stop coming to your practice if they have to pay as they go. How are you setting up those care plans and the financial agreements? Because data shows us that it matters. So when we're talking about patient retention, your strategy has to also include, how am I gonna schedule them out? How am I gonna set up the agreements with the patient so that we don't treat for free, there's a value that's provided, and the patient is able to focus more on getting better and showing up for their visits than the money after they, they sign up for care. And then finally, have you really identified policies? When we talk about that phone call that somebody has to make to a patient that leaves the office, without a future appointment or no-showed, how are you going to measure? How many times is your staff going to call out? How are you going to know that those activities took place? So we define it under these three things. You, the problem is scheduling, setup, and lack of policies lead to poor retention rates within your practice. Okay? Now you've got to measure it. Today we're going to show you how to measure your PVA, your retention percentage, how many no-shows, how many patients left without future appointments, and your conversions. What do I mean by conversions? How often does a patient drop out when going from day one to day two, day two to day three, day 10 to day 11? We can show you how to measure where that's happening. So you have to be able to measure it. But most of the time, the problem that we find as practice owners that we deal with say, I want to look at a report that tells me how many no-shows there are, how many patients uh, didn't show up for visits, how many patients left without future appointments and haven't come back. What is the problem with that? So they're good reports, and we got them. I can show you to them. They're very pretty, very well laid out, and pretty accurate. But what do you do with them? Do they go on somebody's desk? Do they go on the front desk, front desk, desk and, and you ask them within a day, have you made all the phone calls? And they say yes, and you have to look at the post-it notes to follow up. It's ineffective at best. So at the end of the presentation, we're actually going to go over how on earth we can create a mechanism for you to measure these things, but more importantly, how to create policies, procedures, and the how-to guide that you and the staff in your office can gain clarity on how to implement a good strategy and follow up on it. All right, so we're talking about how to react to things, but how are we going to prevent it? So preparation, right? If you're setting up every single patient that comes to your office with 36 visits and they all have different 
potential CPT codes and so your care plans are varying values, that patient who prepays or that patient that sets themselves up on recurring visits is a lot more likely to keep coming through the door. Did you actually put them on the calendar so that there's reminder calls for all of this? So one, two, and three are all about setting yourself up to do this. The prepays, some states simply don't allow it. So that might not even apply to some of the people listening to the call, but most of the time you can keep a card on file that you can run as you go so the patient doesn't have to pull out their wallet each time. So we're gonna go over how to do that as we actually get into the system. So patient retention, you have to have a policy in, pl in place. How many phone calls, how many texts, how many emails, how many Facebook messages, how many carrier pigeons, whatever mechanism that you choose as an office, how are you gonna track it? What medium is your office gonna use? And so we need to help you as the practice owner, as the office manager, come up with this policy and figure out how to do it, right? So there's gotta be a process. Three calls, three texts, three emails, and then, then what? Then discharge the patient, then escalate to a doctor, You've got to have a mechanism, and that's where we say task it. So reports don't allow you to put updates that I called this person three times, texted, texted this person three times, and emailed this person three times, and I'm not getting anywhere. And we're not even talking about ex, uh, outstanding balances. Here we're simply talking about the patient showing up. So we have to be able to put a policy in place that allows us to track these active patients and your office needs a policy for discharging patients. If they haven't showed up in a certain amount of time or they haven't reacted, what are we going to do with these active patients? And I'm going to make a brief accusation here that some of our doctors who don't like drugs take one on a daily basis, and the drug is uh, affectionately referred to as hopium. We hope that this patient will come back in, yet we've taken no Effective measures, in a lot of cases, with a lot of the practices that I, that I deal with, they've taken no effective measures to actually regenerate or, or reactivate these patients. So they're on a report somewhere, but there's no active me mechanism to contact them. So we're not discharging them. We're not going after them. They stay as active patients. And so really, they just stay there in limbo, and we're hoping that they, they walk through the door. I hope they walk through the door as well but it's unlikely. So as we are, this is a brief presentation to go over how on earth we are approaching patient retention, but now I actually want to get into the nitty gritty of it. I actually want to show uh, you how you can go ahead and do some of this. And I will just keep in mind that I'm able to answer any questions as you're going. I'll keep checking that periodically. So again, our way of going about this, define it, measure it, prevent it, and address it. Define it, it's an abstract concept where we're simply going to talk about, I want to retain patients, and I know I need to have policies in place for scheduling, reminding, prepaying, and preparing those patient accounts so that they're set up for the highest level of success possible. You know, we're betting on, on the patients here. And we're betting on that they're going to look at their health as the most valuable thing to them, and they're going to invest the time, energy, and funds into making it better, and you're the guide for that. So in this scenario, we're going to move right into Genesis. And I'm going to blow this up so it's a little bit bigger here. So the first tool for measuring is we've got the radar chart. There's a chart on the home page. I've gone over this before, but you can see here that – there are uh, a number of metrics that have to do with patient retention, and it allows you to get a snapshot of how well you're doing. So in this particular case, I've got patient visits uh, in the upper left-hand corner here at 71 visits and 72 visits. This is a demo account. I realize the volume is very, very low. But then we've got patients that leave our office without future appointments, 45 in one month and 37 in another month. And those are indicating that those are not good. That's about 50%. That's how you read this radar chart. The access for the daily no future appointments, the green and the purple underneath it, are showing that this is not hitting goal. And then you go to the right clockwise on this chart, and you see that there are no-shows at 
283, and 91. This is a way for us to configure for each and every practice that is using Genesis that you can see at a glance the way your practice is performing or the level that your practice is performing to on the metrics that are most important to you. So you don't have to go look at a report. However, just like an x-ray can tell you, you know, where something is wrong, it, the expertise in adjusting correctly isn't necessarily just anybody can look at this picture and do something. There's got to be training. There's got to be uh, procedures that are, are followed up after this. So we wanted to take it a little bit further there. You can go into reports, down to scheduling. And as I mentioned, we've got a great no-shows report. It's fantastic. I still recommend that you don't look at it that often because it is not a mechanism for following up. This is simply one of those things that allows you to take a snapshot of how well your practice is doing. The same thing goes for our no future appointments. So what we wanna do is we wanna measure certain things such as how often patients are walking through the door, how often uh, they're leaving without future appointments or no-shows, but then what? All right, we're gonna answer that question in just a minute. One of the other things that we said we wanted to men uh, measure was your PVA. So if you head to reports, your billing analytics, and your billing statistics report, it allows you to run for a time frame here and I'm going to run this for this year. You'll notice here at the bottom, I'm changing the date to January 1st. And then you actually have a whole bunch of metrics that you can select down here at the bottom. And I've done webinars on reporting before, so I'm not going to go into too much depth on the robust nature of this report because you can create any combination of metrics that you want to you want to look at, but here I'm going to simply look at the provider as a whole, this entire practice over this 10 and a half month period. And as I click and I run this, what it's going to do is it's going to give me all of the accounts and all of the visits. So for us, I'm able to see I'm getting paid an average of $49.09 per visit based on the third to last column here. And here, I'm, on the version I'm looking at here, we don't necessarily have the number of visits. So I'm going to simply use a calculator for this one, and I'm going to use my Windows-based calculator. And I'll take my 174 visits over this time, divide it by my 35 accounts, and I'm averaging just shy of five visits per account. This number should mean something. As we look at your practice, and if you need help with this after this webinar, feel free to reach out to us via task and we'll schedule some time with one of our coaches to help you do this. What number is right for you? It's going to be different for each practice, but most of our practices that we talk to, their goal is to keep patients forever. In this particular case, we're looking at a 10-month period of time that's usually a large enough sample size to see how long pa patients are staying. So your patient visit average is one of those metrics that we, we want you to track and we want you to see if it's going up or down. Uh, lastly, we want you to look at, you know, go back to the presentation here. So conversions from day one to, and so we've recently created a tool under scheduling and we call it our appointment type summary. Fantastic. Now, for this very simple example, I've prepared just two different, uh, it's actually just one different appointment type. I will go back and we'll make this just a little bit longer of a time frame here. And I'll run the report. It should bring up a few others. Yep, excellent. So what this does is, according to the appointment types that you have in your office, we can actually uh, track how many appointment types are actually checked in and checked out. This is checked in and checked out uh, appointment types. So you can see that uh, for all the ones that came in for, let's just say, day ones, care plan one, 
decompression, new patient exams. New patient exams here is 60, re-exams is seven. That is one way of doing a conversion. If I've got 60 brand new patients in a time frame and only seven of them made it to re-exam, I know I'm losing people between their first and 12th visit. And I can actually do the percentage of retention based on that. These are important numbers because you can tell where in the process. If you had 60 make it to the new patient exam and 58 make it to your re-exam, you know you're losing patients after that at some point, if you're losing patients at all. So you might not have a retention problem. So these are great reports to look at. However, what to do when there's a problem is what we're going to talk about next. So as we're defining the problem and we're measuring it, I've got a retention problem. How do I know that? I've got a, uh, a problem because I'm losing people from my day one to day two, like people are just not coming back for a report of findings, or I'm losing them after the doctor's report. We are able to pinpoint that information with these tools and actually tell you what's happening. So if I learn this, what can I do about it? And I'm going to take a minute to go on a brief tangent and talk to you about a problem that you might be suffering from in your practice. You might look at this or have an epiphany in this moment, and you're running this report right now for your own practice as you're watching the webinar, and you're doing some quick math, and you're finding that, yeah, I'm losing people. Hold your horses on doing anything about it for a moment. If you've had this experience where you realize that something is going wrong in your practice, and you then make a huge emphasis on this, I almost guarantee you, I've met all of your staff. I've talked to them. They care just as much as you do most of the time. They're going to do a good job with it for a period of time. But what's going to happen to the other priorities that you've talked about? I submit that there's a chance that they're going to drop other priorities because nobody can remember to do all of this. So what am I suggesting? I'm suggesting that you listen to this and then we figure out together how on earth you can keep them focused on the things they're already really doing well and then add this in so they don't have to memory manage patient retention. They don't have to memory manage the fact that Dr. So-and-so told me that this was really important right now and she cares about these patients and she's right and I'm going to listen to her. But as I'm focusing on this, I'm shifting my focus away from somewhere else. There's a way of remembering it all and it involves a cultural shift sometimes in the office. So we're going to get into that right now. So, so far, we've defined the problem. We are measuring the problem in a couple of different ways. Uh, on the home page, you can use the radar chart to see the actual number of future appointments uh, that are not scheduled, the number of people that are no-showing, and you can see how well they're doing based on the goals that you've set. You know how to look up the reports. You know how to look up uh, PVA, you can do a great job at figuring out where they're losing them. But now what? Do we just talk to our office? I suggest that that's not the best course of action. By all means, have a conversation. But let's make sure we talk about it. How are we going to define a process? So if looking at a report doesn't get the job done because you can't figure out whether or not they've made the three phone calls, made the three text messages, made the three emails, what to do? So I'm heading into a patient, all right? And we have a feature within Genesis called Patient Relationship Management. And this is a part of our strategy to actually, sorry. This is a part of our strategy to actually maintain contact with those patients. So as I click on this patient account, oh, I somehow I deleted or cleared out the account that I was looking for. Bear with me for one moment here. So what we're talking about here is two types of strategies. One is understanding when transitions are happening so that we can prevent problems. Uh, so you know somebody's coming in for an appointment that you're constantly losing them out. So after after a doctor's report, they're not coming back, what do you do? Well, you wanna put in a special event 
that's going to allow you to make an extra special phone call or text message to a patient. Hey, you had your doctor's report. The care plan was put in place. We're so looking forward to seeing you for your first real treatment visit where we're going to do the decompression. We're going to get acupuncture done. We're going to make the adjustment. We're going to show you the exercises and traction that you need to do to correct this, this problem that you're having so you can get back to full function. That's exciting stuff. And we want to keep that excitement going. So when you look at a patient account, there's this little checkbox over here on the right-hand side, right underneath this thing called PRM monitoring. And this is a setting that you can use for all of your patients, meaning that you can turn this on for all of your practice. What does it mean? It means that we turn on monitoring for your no-shows and your no-future appointments. We can then talk about turning on reminder services. So this little thing right here, appointment reminder call that I'm highlighting and now zooming in quite a bit on, we want to turn this on for your entire practice, calling, texting, calling and texting, texting the same day, texting the day before, texting the day before and the same day, making very specific reminders to your patients. We want to automate the fact that your office is going to reach out to these practices prior to those big events. So if you think that you can memory manage these things, that's one way of doing it. I don't know how you're going to measure that, though. How are you going to measure whether or not every single patient got all the reminders? How are you going to measure whether or not specific appointments were supposed to get more reminders than other ones? We can turn this on for you and help your office actually do this from an automated perspective. And then what happens if they miss it? So if the preventative measures don't work and there still is a no-show, what happens then? We then can say, all right, I have a patient that didn't show up. When do I want to have a notification show up for my office staff? And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more for this. And we're going to run this for all categories here or for all roles. All right. Current stats, all categories. I'm just gonna bring up an example here of a no-show ticket. All right. It sees that I'm conflicted here because I'm logged in to a demo account. So it's just going to ask me to refresh because I have a problem. So bear with me one second here. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up a task, a task that actually says to the front desk person, this person has no-showed in the last hour, in the last six hours, whatever we configure the threshold to. So if you want to wait 15 minutes for a patient to come in, and if your staff is going to call up that patient and before, you know, if they actually get a hold of the patient, they're going to reschedule, right? And if they're able to reschedule, it's not a problem for them. They, they move the appointment and there is no no-show task that opens up. But if they're not able to contact that patient and they're not able to get something rescheduled, then that no-show is going to stay a no-show, just like this Mary Williams right here. She is a no-show. You can tell because her appointment is in all red. And I'll move this over here. So I checked her in, and I see that there are a whole bunch of other uh, notifications that, that show up here. But if I put her back to a no-show, you'll see that she's red. I got 15 minutes to call her, but what if I don't make contact? What next? What is your office doing next? How do you know that your office has done something next? How do you know that somebody has made the next phone call? Right, because this visit's important. And so we can set up a threshold that will open up a task that says in 15 minutes, in an hour, in three hours, in six hours, or overnight, let's open up a task that says, hey, there was a no-show for this particular patient. And then on that task, they can actually log what they're doing. Okay. Well, we closed all the examples in our demo account today. I'm sorry about that, everybody. We weren't able to look at, at an example 
of this particular one. So, but it's in the task that we're able to create that there is a no-show. I'll just look one up this way. It will be pretty simple as I want you to actually see the mechanism uh, that we, we use to, or, to actually track this. So if you think that they're going to memory manage it, and here's great, we got a bunch of examples here. So no show and no future appointment for Jason Barnes. That's my name. That's I'm the patient here. Jason Barnes did not show up to their visit. And uh, if there was a, a real one, it would actually give you the last appointment that they no showed for. But our system is actually smart enough to say if there is a patient that had both a no show to their last appointment and didn't have any future appointments, it will tell you both of those things at the same time. It won't open you two separate tasks for a patient that needed to have a follow-up. So in this particular instance, this task shows up to your front office, and if they want to put down on the day that they actually have this is called, texted, and emailed. And in this particular case, they actually notate on the task that they called, texted, and emailed on November 15th. They then change that start date to, let's just say, two days from now, and that task is now set to pop up as active two days from now where they're gonna call, text, and email again. You need to have a policy in place so that your staff knows what to do when there is an event like this. So again, we are able to measure things, but now you actually have to help people do things. And they have to know from the practice owner what it is that they're supposed to do before they discharge a patient. So if they call, text, and email over a 10-day period three times each, then it's okay to discharge this patient. They come in, they choose this patient. They come down here to discharged, non-responsive. They put it in as a reason. They save this patient. And now if anyone questions why, they don't have to go and look at or, or talk to that person. They can simply go look at the task that is updated on this particular patient account, and they can say, oh, Jane Doe, the office manager, called, texted, and emailed nine times over 10 days, and then she did exactly what we were looking for. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how on earth can I have somebody text from their own phone? Well, I don't think it's a good idea. We also offer other services that allow you to text from a console that has patient information synchronized to it so that you can check to see that the text messages are actually going out if you want to do a quality check. The email should be a practice email, and you should be able to check that those are happening. The calls, frankly, they're really, really tough to, to confirm. Most of the time, we just have to take somebody's word for it. But the other two items, you can actually check. So at this point, you're reacting when something happens. You're preventing because you're measuring where people are actually losing, and you're putting special policies and procedures in place. Now, how do you do that? If you know you're losing somebody, and I'll check for questions right here. If you know you're losing somebody at the point of the doctor's report, how are you going to change your policies and procedures and then know that your staff is actually going to do something about it? Let me, let me show you. So if you go under practice, under configuration, then practice, and then finally to the schedule, it's going to bring up some options for you. I'm going to ask you to click on this third tab where you can create notifications that are really, really specific to your practice's specific needs. So as we go to a DR report reminder, if you want to have an actual physical phone call need, we can not show a pop-up message, right? This patient, this means that the patient won't be stopped when they're checking in. This is just something that we want to create as a, uh, a notification that when somebody has a checked-in appointment type, meaning that they have a doctor's re report, that we want to automatically create a report of findings task that opens up, and you can configure what's going to be on this task. Maria, call Jane Doe, who is our patient, she just got her report of findings. Make sure we call to personally confirm that she's going to show up for her first 
treatment appointment on Thursday of next week, you can actually configure it to get really specific, to go to a specific person with very, very specific information. But how are we going to teach the system to actually do that? So here are sets of rules that you can put in place that when all of them are true, will open up or trigger that task. So no one is memory managing this. No one's printing out a list, going down them and saying, oh my gosh, it's the second visit. It's all these people. I'm in the team huddle. These are the ones that I need to call today. And then there's no mechanism to make sure that that actually happens. So here, we can come in here and find an appointment type rule. So there are a lot of rules. So I'm going to just use a find on this one. And we'll go down. So if I turn this on, has a report of findings, has an exam, has a, whatever it is that I want to choose, right, as the type of appointment that I want to, to have this task triggered, I as the doctor, I as the practice manager know that this is going to happen each time now. And the task that I want to have opened is going to open to Maria or whoever the name of the person is that's handling this for you. And as opposed to making a big push for something, for a short period of time that has a high likelihood of going back to being a problem, we put something in place that is going to be there forever. It's like the Terminator. It doesn't get tired. It doesn't stop. It doesn't forget its mission. It's always going to trigger. We come down and we save this new notification. And now we, oh, I didn't, I didn't put everything in there. So I've got the no message needed here. save this. Now I've got a new appointment type notification that's going to open a task so that my staff knows what to do. Now, as opposed to looking at reports or lists that are being handed out in huddles, we're now measuring this with reports, making decisions, implementing automation with tasks for no, you know, patients who leave your office without future appointments, no shows. We're offering tasks at those special places where you want reminders, right? But we can also add other types of notifications. But the whole point of this is, is to stop memory managing this and to rely on the technology to help you implement the process that will help you stay in touch with your practice and your patients. We want to define the problem of patient retention and where it is happening, measure it accordingly. And then after this happens, after you implement or address the problem, of when people actually don't show up or when people do have a problem. And we want to take as much time, energy, and effort out to prevent this as possible. That is the secret that Genesis helps people unlock for their own practices. And that's our job to help you implement those. Now, can you implement this on your own? Yeah, all of these things are totally available to you. How to do it can be a little bit, a little bit tougher than just sitting down and, and trying to redo what I've showed you today. So if you do want to implement these things in your office and you want to figure out how to do this, it, it takes a little bit of guidance. So let us be the tour guides for that. Open tasks to us um, saying, hey, I want to put patient relationship management or PRM in place. I want to put reminders in place. I want to be better taught on how to measure my patient retention, my PVA, you know, how many times uh, I have no-shows or patients leaving my office without future appointments and help me implement my policies and procedures so that I can prevent this stuff in, in the future. So that's our presentation for today. That's our method for going about this. And we want you guys to grow those families, to keep in touch with those patients. And I thank you so much for listening. So I'll open it up to, you know, questions and answers here at the end. Feel free to type some in. And if I can help with them, I certainly will. So we'll give it a minute or two. And uh, if there are, is anything I can help with, I will definitely do that. I uh, visited a practice in Las Vegas last week that we helped, uh, you know, get going on this. And, you know, they were gung-ho, and, and the only thing that they had to do was it was pretty easy for them to come up with their rules and the, uh, the, the place where people were being lost in their workflow. But it's hard to actually change the, the direction of a practice. So, they had to really commit to, to actually doing tasks. So it's just something that they hadn't committed to before. And 
each and every single person uh, took a pledge. And so they're, they wanted to retain all their patients. And that's just one of those, uh, those issues that you're going to have to maybe seek some help from us with, because we, we've got some pretty good, um, got some pretty good methods and, and strategies for helping practices adopt the tasks. All right. No questions today. I thank all of you for your time. Have an excellent week, and we look forward to talking to you in two weeks. Bye now.